So I'm not gonna lie to you. I have no idea how to approach this subject. This is, after watching this four hour doc and film and series, I still have no idea how to approach this subject or what to talk about. Because on the one hand, it is important to talk about Bill Cosby and what he meant to black entertainers, black entertainers and black people in general. The barriers he broke down, but it's also important to talk about the alleged victims and uh, the culture that's created for women or people not to speak up. And that is important as well. I have no idea how to talk about, we need to talk about Cosby. I have no idea. I literally have tried for the past five days to figure out what I'm going to specifically talk about. Because there's so many different things to talk about. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. When I first saw the title, We Need to Talk About Cosby, my initial reaction was, We? <laughs> we. <laughs> Who is we? Is it people that believe Cosby did it? Is it people that still have reservations that he didn't do it? Is it black people? Is it white people? Is it the media? Is it Hollywood? Is it entertainers? Is it comedians? Who is we or is it we as the entire collective? But who is we? My thinking is, it's black people because, well, he was a symbol for black excellence. The pinnacle, nobody else was the symbol of black excellence like a Cosby. Not even an Oprah, not even an Obama, because Cosby was the first. So do I talk about what he meant to us? But in doing that, am I disrespecting the alleged victims? But if I spend all that time alleged victims, do I truly believe that he did it? Or do I believe he didn't do it? What, like, what do I feel? What do I think? How do I portray, how do I portray how I feel? Because I don't know how I feel. I legit don't know how I feel. This what makes this an interesting doc. And to be honest, I still don't know what the purpose of this doc was. Why did we need to talk about Cosby? I think most people, if you had an idea or had an inkling of how you thought about Cosby, whether he did it, didn't do it, I don't think you left away thinking any different. I think if you felt like he did it, even enforced it more for you that he did it, if you didn't think he did it, then you could completely tear down this whole four hours into this is just a hit piece and it's a <laughs> and it's propaganda. I don't think this left you any different depending on how you felt. Why? Because I think the thing that was missing from this was an actual conversation the thing is I love that it gave a detail of Cosby and what he meant what he's done that people didn't even go into we haven't even seen there were so many gems in here about his upbringing and how he truly broke down barriers that's never been explained before never been seen before detailed like it was and even somebody like me that isn't super emotional. I mean, of course, I cried at Lion King. I cried when Mufasa died. And I cried when John Coffey died. Yeah, I gotta admit it, I did. But I don't get that emotional. And I'm not gonna lie to you. 10 minutes into this doc series, I did this.
Oh man, I'm about to fucking start crying, bro. Ah! I, I broke down. Why I broke down? Because I had literally every emotion you can have literally rushed over my body. I felt proud, happy, disappointed, sad, angry, confused, conflicted. Every emotion you could have all at once. Because I still don't know what I was watching because I still don't know how I feel about Cosby. I don't know. They were literally going over how he, after he already had a success, he was the first lead in, in uh, the first black lead for a, a, a series to speak intellectually, to, to make positive change for stuntmen and black people in, 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 in Hollywood. And then after having that success and being a comedian, he pivoted to focusing on education and educating black kids who we were being neglected in the 60s and in the 70s. So I see all this. Meanwhile, during even that time, there are people, that are, there are women that are saying, he did this to me, he did that to me. He took advantage of me, he sexual assault. During all of this, even then, it's like, how do I, how, do, how does my mind, like, <laughs> how, it's a complete, mind like it's a complete mind but like it's it's like the point is this he rapes but he saves and he saves more than he rapes but he probably does rape it's like it completely messes with your mind for the longest time with we all think how can somebody and this is not just for Cosby for a lot of these folk how can somebody that is so positive, that wants to create a positive change, sacrifice all these different things, how can somebody be that positive and then be completely different when the camera's off? Or be completely different in the side, inside of his own home or in a hotel or somebody else's house? Like, how can somebody be that different? How can somebody hurt and conflict, put, a, put pain onto somebody? abuse somebody, violate somebody, but then wants to change the world. Like it doesn't make sense. And it, it, it and it's hard for the mind to even configure because there's no way to configure it. So it's like, I don't really know how to talk about this because if, if I go one route, I'm neglecting one part and if i go one route i'm neglecting another part so it's like on one end it's like it's just it's no way even though these are models and actors and all this like there's no way not at least one person is lying there's no way you can't tell me at least one person it, there's no way that one person is not it one person has to be telling the truth. One person, one, which is enough. One person has to be telling the, telling the truth, right? One person has to be telling the truth. But then, because of the history that we know that Cosby helped <laughs> teach us in the 50s and 60s, it's like, but we also know the history of what black men and black leaders go through in America. And that nobody leaves this game clean. So that is conflicting. And then it's like, well, can it be both? Is it both? Is it, he, he might have did these things, but he also is being son of a martyr because he's a black leader and nobody can leave this game clean. Even in death. R.I.P. to Michael Jackson leaving Neverland. Nobody leaves this game clean. Even when you die, they're still going to try to scrape up your remains. <laughs> to put dirt, even more dirt on your casket. So, it's like, how do I talk about this? Because either way, I feel like I'm... I, either way, I feel like 
there's just no great way to talk about this. There's no perfect way to talk about this. For an imperfect person, it makes sense. But there's no way for me to talk about this. I, like everything in me is like, I gotta talk about the race factor. Cause it's a factor. I have to talk about the race factor. And when we get to the deposition, when we get to Spanish fly, it's like on one hand, you got a deposition, which he confessed to certain things, but then you get to how he was charged. It was like, you look at it like, how can he, how could he been charged if he was taught? So it's just like, just like me right now, I'm all over the place. That's how I feel. And that's the only way I can convey this. There's not gonna be clean cut. There's not gonna be jokes within this and, uh, so I, I still gotta be me, but it's not gonna be clean cut and everything and structure and everything. Cause I don't know how to talk about this. I've been struggling for five days to figure out how to talk about this. And I still don't know. I still don't know. In no way can I neglect There you go. Yeah. In no way. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm actually glad to have it because now I can actually breathe for a second. All right. In no way do I want to be disrespect disrespectful to any survivors or victims. In the same breath, there's no way I'm going to neglect the racial factor. You can talk about both. Which I feel like this, I didn't really do. It talked about it without really talking about it. It had a conversation without actually really having a conversation. So, I feel the, the important part is really one, one or two things. One, I mentioned it before, Spanish fly. The Spanish fly was the thing that all boys uh, at, from age 11 on up to death, <laughs> we will still be searching for Spanish fly. <laughs> and, and, and what was the old, the old story was, if you took what a little it? drop, it was on the head of a pin. So I put it, it in the drink. Cola. It, doesn't I, it doesn't make it, and the girl would drink it, and she sure. hello America. <laughs> We gotta talk about Spanish fly because me, I don't know if it's an old, I guess it's an old drug. I had no idea what Spanish fly was. I'm just now learning through all this what Spanish fly is and Charlemagne the guy. But I'm learning there's a thing called Spanish fly and I guess men put it in women's drinks or women took it to, as kind of like ecstasy. And it's like, you watch Cosby, and he gave so many references. He gave so, Cosby gave so many references to Spanish Fly. And it's like, it's a drug. They said people will use, and men will use, and boys will use. And it's just like, there's something there. There's something there. And then you get to the deposition. And he admits, yeah, uh, I did this. I, I had this drug and had that drug and I would give it to women. And they talk about how there was one woman who she never gave consent. Well, I, she, she, I didn't know if she didn't say yes, she didn't say no, so I kept going. And then it's like, so she never gave consent. That would be the, that would be But then you think about, well, <laughs> if we're being realistic in a realistic world, you got to say, ask before you, <laughs> it's just like nobody ask before they do anything. You might get a test, yo, come over, I'm 
I'm hor you might get a come over, I'm horny, or can you pull up, I'm horny. Uh, you might get that. Nobody, you know, goes, can I have, and why were you about, can I have the sex? Yes. Yes. Can I have the sex? Can I have the sex? Can I have the sex? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Can I have the sex? So it's like, it does make you think about, do we really give, do we ask for consent? Do women give consent? Like, really think about that. But then I think about the deposition and how he was, Cosby was told, you're not going to be charged for this. This is going to be closed, concealed. Nobody's going to know about this. But we just have this for the record. Which I'm still trying to figure out, why did he agree to do that? Why did he agree to do that? Knowing the history of this country that he helped educate black kids on and black people on, you really thought they was going to... And I think it gets to his arrogance and him believing he is above the system and above any scrutiny. And he forgot that he is a black, successful man in America. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do, what you represent. You're a black man in America, a successful black man. You think they're going <laughs> to let you just do whatever? You're not going to get penalized? No. No. Absolutely not. Now, not to say he didn't do what they, he didn't do anything. Not to say that, but because I come on, you, <laughs> you really thought? That they was just going to let it go? Really? And then I look at... Well, how did the deposition where he's talking about all the things he did with uh, uh, all these different women in the past. Then I look at how this all came full circle in episode four. I look at how this even became a thing with Cosby. And it still doesn't make sense to me. How a rel relatively unknown comic... Unknown black comic, unknown black male comic, just was working out some jokes that somebody just happened to record. And it became this overall buzz. And I'm like, well, how did that happen? Like, and then it gave the permission, or not permission, but it gave the almost like the starter for now, every all the women. To, to finally have the courage to come forward. And it's like, it just still don't make sense to me, to be honest with you. And it, it, I just, it still don't make sense to me. It don't make sense how everything came about. And then you had the whole, everybody said, and definitely everybody black said, oh, he was trying to get NBC, so that's why all this is happening and we still don't know if that part is true but the NBC part of him having his own show that is true I did not know that so the fact that he was trying to get his own show I'm like well that's not I don't that ain't going <laughs> they allowed him to have a show before like, they, he basically saved NBC with the Cosby show which is like the most important show in my opinion ever ever not white black most important show ever because it literally unified the entire country with one show to where a black man became America's dad. And when I think about a black man becoming America's dad, that's the ultimate. That's the ultimate empowerment. That is the ultimate breaking down all the barriers. And not to say... There still definitely was still racism. There still was police brutality. There still was racism in Hollywood. There still was all these different things. And we still have Reaganomics and crack epidemic. But at least the imagery and the symbol that it represented, it brought us closer together as a country in some aspect. Or at least for 30 minutes. <laughs> all right? 30 minutes every week. For eight years. It at least brought people together. Right? But. <sighs> like all these stories. Over the past seven years that. 
now comedians and people in Hollywood say, yeah, I heard this. I heard that. Yeah, a girl told me this. A friend told me that. I went to my friend. They told me this. A friend told me that. Right? And we knew DLU. Yeah, I was on radio. And they uh, talked about that. And then Neil, Br yeah, I heard about that. And then all these different people. And it was, once again, it's like, it can't be lying. Because people are coming forward to their friends that they're not going to the press. They're not telling anybody. They just went to somebody that they know that they rely on. That told them in privacy what Cosby allegedly did. That's something. You can't ignore that. But then, I still have to go to how Cosby was charged. How he was charged. A death position that was supposed to be concealed. And a judge and DA told him it will not be ever opened. You can trust us, the criminal justice system. <laughs> he was then told that because you're a celebrity and you preach about being positive and being a, pulling your pants up and having proper behavior, appropriate behavior, then now that causes the right for us to open a concealed deposition. What? <laughs> like, it does not make sense. None of this makes sense. How? And then he gets charged with no evidence. And that's the one thing that a lot of people who still have, don't believe that he's, don't believe that he's guilty, doesn't mean that he's innocent, but don't mean he's guilty. It's like, there is no evidence, none. In all these cases, there is not one ounce of evidence. But then my mind goes, well, how is there going to be evidence or something like that? Because Unless you went to the police or you went to get a DNA kit, uh, 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 a kit done, a woman get a kit done, or have DNA analysis, how would you know? Sexual assault and abuse and think like, unless there's a mark, unless there's something there, a lot of times it just be how a woman feels. Even if, even if a man didn't intend to abuse you, you can still feel that way. This is such a confusing thing that we don't talk about. Shout out to Patrice O'Neal. He gave a crazy story. It's like, there are times when women are not telling the truth, right? So the whole, I, Believe all women is dangerous. It is. It's dangerous. You say it, believe all women because there are women that do, do not tell the truth in our line. But that does not get, negate the fact of the women that are telling the truth. Once again, there is like there is nowhere to go here. You're in a box for me. It's like I don't know where to go here. I legit don't know where to go here. Where do I go? Can you be wrong if you believe the women with no evidence? Once again, they all can't be lying. They all could be telling the truth. Every single one of them could be telling the truth. And are we just trying not to believe it because of what he meant? Or because of what the positive change he's, he's done? If this was anybody else, white, Asian, if this was anybody else, how would this look? 
Where are the other docs? Where are the other trials of the other men that this is that 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 this has, has occurred? Where's the Weinstein trial in Doc? Where's the uh, uh, what was it Robert Ailes from CEO of Fox and the C CEO of I believe CNN? Where are all their doc? Woody out. Where are these docs? Where are these trials? Why have them been made? Have they been made and we just not talking about it? Why do we need to talk about Cosby? Why? During this doc, this doc was made when the director or the creator, wherever he is, I believe Kwame Bell, Cosby was in jail. He thought he was going to spend the rest of his life in jail. So off that alone, what was the need for this? If Even though there's no justice for abuse and violation of a body. But if at least somewhat of justice was served and you believe he was going to rot in jail, what would be the pur purpose of this doc? But then the last day of filming, Bell finds out that he gets released. Cosby got released in the and the judgment was overturned. So now what does the doc mean? So me, in my mind, I thought this all this was created after he got released. That was what I thought, which would have made sense to be like, just because he got released doesn't mean he's innocent. Let's remind you everything that has happened. That would have made sense. But the fact that this was done while you thought he was going to be in jail and die in jail, once again, leads me to what was the purpose of this? And then I look at episode four and the Me Too, and I, I got I got very I got I got very just like disappointed with the conversation of you know black men they don't support black women they don't support our women they don't support black men black and it's like oh man <laughs> we really gotta do that even though he's not lying but there are men that believe women. There are men that support it. But just like when you make it so slanted to where it's like, black men don't do this. Black men, we already have a whole doc of, black, of a black man violating everyone. It's just like, uh, come on, man. And once again, I know this is all over the place. This is legit my thoughts. So this is probably the most truest <laughs> Break down a review you're going to get because I'm all over the place. I still, while I am talking and trying to figure out what, like, what, how to talk, I still don't know what to say about this, bro. Because I'm like, I'm thinking about, after, I'm thinking about everything I watched. And I'm thinking about, <sighs> all those women, man. All those women. Women that have not come for it, right? And I'm like, the torture of seeing somebody win all these awards and be on Ebony Front of Time magazine, Ebony magazine, all these different things, right? All these different shows, symbol of greatness, symbol of all these different things. And you could be looking at a sexual offender, assaulter. Most women don't have to deal with that. Most women have to go through their lives with not seeing the their abuser on TV, but still have the same effects of trying to live with that experience of being abused, of being violated. That's hard enough without seeing a person on all the magazines and TV shows and movies and being praised. Imagine going through that. But then I'm like, why do we need to talk about Cosby? Why? 
Why do we need Taco Bell Cosby? I never got that answer. Maybe at the end of this series, when we talked about separating the person from their art. But I feel like we never truly had a conversation. We never truly had a conversation. Yeah, we talked about the deposition and how it got overturned. And, you know, we talked about how black people specifically, how we try to make excuses. And we talked about how there's been, <laughs> there, there has been and still is a, 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 a continuous pattern of our black leaders being scrutinized and torn down even in death, like I mentioned before. All these different things. This is so complex, so confusing. I don't know how to talk about this. I don't. I can't go either way. I don't. I. I just wish there was more of a conversation. Um, I heard before I saw the doc about Jerry Seinfeld and Colbert and how they talk. But I can't watch him again. I can watch him. I can separate him from whatever he did. And, uh, no, I can't do that. And then pe t people talk about what do you think of Cosby? What do you think about Cosby? I think like he's a great man, but he was an evil person that did good, good things or a good person that did evil things. Or I always going to see him just as a priest. You know, I'm just going to see him as somebody that was a sexual offender. There is no wrong answer because still we do not know. And it sucks because if your mother told you Cosby did this to your mother or your sister or your niece or your best friend, you're going to be going to believe him. So because most of us are not close to any of these alleged victims, it's hard for us to believe. But if roles were reversed, and there was something that we didn't know, then we would. But it's crazy, but then, because we know, we believe we know Cosby, well, we believe this man, because we grew up on this man. So, yeah, you gotta have more than 15, 30, 35, 40. It's like a, a, a football player running back running through the, the field. It was like, you got, you got 60. more. They, that's crazy. And is it because he's black? It's because it's Cosby. Would we do this for anybody else? But would this happen to anybody? Is anybody, is it, would this happen? What happened? The media storm, the complete tearing down of a star off the ground, trying to erase a legacy. Trying to erase a legacy. We can't do that. We can't erase the Cosby Show, Fat Albert, I Spy, the Electric Cup. Like, we cannot do that. We can't erase the legacy. Because if we do that, we're going to the beginning of what he, Cosby, said is, is the whitewashing of our history and the whitewashing of everything that's going on. Malcolm X, the whitewashing. And now they're just, it, it's just a race that we don't even talk about it. We don't think about it. We just, oh, we just somehow got here to this certain place. I truly feel like there's not a Cosby. If there's not a Cosby. You might not be seen on Obama. That's not a reach. Cosby show normalized black families just being families. We're not in the ghetto. We're not bigots. We're not, we're normal people. The Cosby show, show normalized us. And planted the seed for a tree to grow, which I believe was the Obama family. And also Obama had to be astronomically great, which is still to this day, how great is a man when there is literally no scandal that we know about? And you know, every, you know, the white supremacist mother tried their best to find a scandal. The best you could find that he used to smoke weed in college, which we all did and which we all still do. <laughs> so the best you could do is, well, you smoke weed and color. That's the best you can do, huh? That's the best you could do. Now that's now that's something we need to do a docu series on Obama. We need to talk about Obama and how crazy that was. That a black man, no scandals, nothing going on. <laughs> was able to become president of the United States. Why is that not a docu-series, right? I'm going back to why do we have to tear down all the black leaders? Like, why do we have to do that? And it's usually our own people. Bell is a comedian. 
Hit on first, can be like, why always gotta be us? Me too. Why always has to be us to tear us down? Why? <laughs> but does that make it wrong? Should we not, as leaders in the community, talk about our own doings? The pow case speech? Is this not the pow case speech? <laughs> That's the funny part. We doing all of this, yet we chastise the pound case speech, which was needed. If the elders of the community, the black elders of the community, can't talk about what we need to get right, who can talk about it? Who? So I never understood the big deal about the pound cake speech until I got older. It's like, I understand Cosby. I'm not gonna chastise him for it, but there's a important, you only get half the story right. Yes, accountability does fall on us. The black mothers and the black fathers and the black kids, it does fall on us. But also, you got to remember we're living in a system that doesn't want us to succeed. <laughs> and it wasn't meant for us to succeed. So that's why when the Cosby makes it out and it comes what he is, it's special. So... It's like, this is damn near the pound cake speech. We gotta hold our leaders account. We gotta hold black folk account. We gotta hold us account. This is the pound cake speech. This doc is the pound cake speech. That's the funny part. But once again, is it half right? <laughs> it has to be about race. Half of it, does, it has to. Women were literally able to change the statute of limitations law. That's not happening for anybody. Only with a black man <laughs> would this happen for. They was able to change two states for the statute of limitations. That's not happening for anybody else. Only for us. The crazy part is laws only change against us they're never going to change for us they're only going to change against us that's the crazy part but then again is that wrong should there be a statute of limitations like i don't even understand what that means <laughs> it's like i don't know is that wrong though but why they have is this once again i don't know i just wish that there was a real conversation in this doc i just feel like personally Forget everything, not forget everything, but amidst, amongst everything else, I feel like there was no real conversation had about the situation in terms of everyone. We had all a, a lot of the victims, alleged victims. We had a lot of people, the uh, actors and models. We had a lot of people or uh, professors, media personalities talk about this, but we rarely had anybody talk about the other side in, in in detail. I mean, you had Roland, Roland Martin. You had a lot of people, but they never truly talked about the other side of why this is happening, why this is truly happening, why it's probably is happening, how it could happen. That is the racial component. They, they talked about, but they didn't have the actual conversation. Why was that deposition opened? How could an unknown comedian make such a firestorm? How could a man be charged with no evidence? How is that possible? We have to talk about that. But we can still condemn Cosby. We can, and we are, and we will. But you have to talk about that. And there was no real discussion about it. I'm thinking in my mind, okay, there might be a black gray background with people facing each other talking about kind of like Jubilee, uh, a channel on YouTube. It's kind of like Jubilee, like kind of facing each other or like kind of giving their opinions on, okay, I think this, but this. I think this, but this. I think this, but what about this? What? That, I thought that was going to be the conversation. People sitting down just saying, oh, yeah, he did this. He meant this, but he did this. What are we learning with that? 
You have people that already have their opinion, sitting down, giving their opinion without anybody going back and forth. And you believe he did it. And do you give up? Well, yeah, maybe he did it or he didn't do it and say, well, he did do this. I think that was the needed conversation. Or maybe the conversation needed to be what happened after the doc and how people are enraged or people are feel like disempowered or this maybe the after effect of this doc is the conversation that needed to be had. And maybe it did its job. I don't know. I feel like I rambled for like 40 minutes. I don't know if you got anything from this. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm gonna say this before, before I go. This is gonna be probably the last day. I'm gonna drop to the last day of Black History Month. I don't feel like he's innocent, but it doesn't mean that he's guilty. It's just, this is a complex story that only caused me and the people involved in God knows. And at the end of the day, his legacy or what what he did on a positive note for black people and black empowerment and black excellence, we're not going to erase that ever because that is important. On another spectrum, we have to encourage women to come forward or we have to try to figure out how to not encourage a certain type of culture that discourage women from speaking speaking out all these women had the same story i felt humiliated i felt embarrassed i felt like i couldn't go forward i felt that's scary and once again we're not thinking about the women that did not come forward so we have to work together And I don't know what to really say about Cosby. I don't know. And I guess that's how it's going to leave. Because I got to be transparent with you. For the longest time, I want to say for four or five years, I'm like, if this man dies tomorrow, what would I say? Because he died, would I say all glowing things and then kind of like hide his flaws or... Would I just be straight up and not care what he's what it is because he's gone, and because he's still here for how many uh, time for the time he has left? I don't know what to say about Cosby. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to explain this to my future kids. I don't know. I don't know. He was and is always going to be a symbol of excellence for black people. And it's change. He will be. But he also always have this ugly shadow and cloud over him. He will. When there's smoke, there's fire. have to take an emotional part out of it and start being like, why us? Why black folk? Why, 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 why? Maybe this is a great lesson. <clears throat> this is a great lesson to show you all that we are not perfect beings. We have to stop upholding these entertainers and these talented people in a high light, they just have a talent. I think that's what I leave it. These people just have a talent and that's it. 
no matter what they preach, no matter what they sing about, no matter what they write about, rap about, act about, get on a podium about, politicize about, no matter what they do, we don't know any of these people behind closed doors and we don't know what they do in the privacy of a hotel or their own home or somebody else's home. We have to be the leaders. We have to think for ourselves. We have to be the change we want to see. And even in wrongdoings, we have to look at people that did do positive things and try to expound upon that and be what they weren't. So that 50 years from now, when we're all creating positive change and created and created a black utopia, people can't go back and say, well, he did this or she did that. We have to be the change that we were actually preaching about and that we wanted to see. But just remember, we're not perfect. But it still doesn't give you the excuse to do evil either. Try to be the best version of you possible. Even when the cameras are off. <laughs>